Welcome to The Verdict. Kent Myers here flying solo today. Mick Cornett is not here this week or next week, but we'll be back the following week after that. We're really pleased you join us today for another uh, version of The Verdict. We're going to meet somebody today that we've not had on The uh, Verdict before. It's our brand new Corporation com uh, Commissioner, Patrice Douglas, the former mayor of Edmond. She has had, frankly, a spectacular career. Uh, as a young adult uh, in, her, in the business world, in the legal world, in the banking world, in the political world, and now she's going to uh, be a regulator for many of the activities that we engage in every day through the Corporation Commission. We hope you'll enjoy the show today. We hope you'll enjoy meeting Patrice Douglas. So uh, sit back and relax, and uh, we're going to take a break right now, but we, when we come back, we'll have uh, with us Patrice Douglas, and we'll meet our new Corporation Commissioner. It's time, America. Our energy future can be ours again with American Natural Gas. We have an abundant, affordable supply, unrivaled anywhere. One billion dollars a day for importing foreign oil isn't just a statistic, it's an opportunity. 30% lower greenhouse emissions isn't a pipe dream, it's a choice. Now is the time. Chesapeake, America's champion of natural gas. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Welcome back to The Verdict. Kent Myers here flying solo without Mick Cornett, who will be back uh, in two weeks. Uh, we're pleased today to welcome to the set of The Verdict the Honorable Patrice Douglas, the uh, new uh, Corporation Commissioner for the state of Oklahoma, just recently appointed. Uh, she has a very interesting and diverse, and as I indicated in the open, some would even term spectacular background in, uh, in education and training. She's an Oklahoma native did her undergraduate work at Oklahoma Christian University, did her law work at the University of Oklahoma, then proceeded to have a, a law practice of about 13 years duration, after which she became a banker. And she was a banker both at Spirit Bank and at First Fidelity Bank here in the uh, metropolitan area. Um, and uh, in uh, 2009, she was elected mayor of the, uh, the city of Edmond. Uh, that position she served in until she recently resigned to be named uh, a corporation commissioner. She received a call from Mary Fallon that I'm sure she'll tell us about, and uh, her life has changed considerably since then. In February 2011, she was the Kate Bernard Award winner for, the outsta for rendering outstanding public service in Oklahoma, and uh, she is now beginning her service uh, as a corporation commissioner and we sure do welcome you to Thank the verdict you. and mix sends his regards. Well, I'm going to I'm going to get him for not being here. Well, the, I'm I'm going to get him for that one. You'll have to stand in line. I will. There okay. are a lot of people I, looking I for will. him. I okay. will. I will. Well, I'm well, going to razz him a little bit if you don't mind. I I want you to okay. believe it. it makes okay. life easier okay. for me. Good deal. Uh, well, congratulations on Thank such you. a successful tenure as mayor of Edmond. Thank um, you. I only keep up uh, with it uh, kind of from what I read in the paper, but mm -hmm. uh, you sure have had a lot of people say a lot of nice things about what you did while you were mayor. Well, I had a great time being mayor. It was an honor. It was the first political office I ever held, and we worked hard to get there. We worked there to get some things done, and even though I had to leave a little bit early, we, we got some great things done in Edmond, and I'm so excited about where that city's going and how it's, how it's aimed right now. So um, it was just a great honor. I loved it. Well. Was it kind of hard? It was. Uh, saying goodbye to those duties and it those, was. well, you're not saying goodbye to those folks, of no. course, but your day-to-day -day routine is very different. It was, it was, it was hard. My heart, um, I, I, I served in that role with my heart and my soul, and I was excited to be there. I loved getting to work with the kids in Edmond. I loved um, getting to be a spokesperson for one of our cities 
and uh, got to be a spokesperson for Oklahoma along the way. I love that. This is a great state, and to get to be one of the people that talks about it uh, outside of the state is, it's a great honor. So it was hard, it was hard to do that, but as the governor phrased it to me, she said, you get to do for Oklahoma what you've been doing for Edmond. So hopefully, um, that, that's exactly what I'll get to do now. She's pretty persuasive, isn't she? She was very persuasive, and I was very honored to get the phone call. I want to go back in time just a little bit uh, during your uh, tenure as mayor and ask you to tell our viewers about what you did on the Aquatic Center, the, the swimming uh, park, or whatever it's called. Right. Uh, talk about that. Well, <laughs> we were able to get a project that had been on the uh, drawing board for about 10 years and we were able to get it off the drawing board and, and make it reality. We pulled together parties that had never sat down and worked together before. The public schools, uh, the YMCA, and the city. And we knew that it was gonna take all three partners. We knew it was gonna take private sector, public sector, our schools. It was gonna take everybody to make that project work. And um, we had the opportunity, we had a window of opportunity to make it happen. We pulled together those groups of people. The YMCA brought capital, the city brought capital and the land. Uh, the schools brought, took it out for a bond election and won. And so we are now going to be home to, if not the largest, one of the largest aquatic centers in Oklahoma with indoor facilities for families and for competition swimming. So it allows us to hold statewide competition, regional competitions in Edmond, a thousand seat arena for swimming, wow. and uh, in one of our loveliest parks. So it was a project that had been ongoing for a while, and we were able to pull it together, and, and I'm where, very excited Where's it gonna be? Mitch Park. Mm. Mitch Park is out mm. at uh, Kelly and Covell. If you, if you know far north Edmond, it's yes. out in that area, and gonna be a lovely, lovely area for our seniors, um, has the kind of swimming facility you need for senior citizens, also has, as, as I said before, that competition facility, which is a real big need in Oklahoma. Well, I guess so, because I know a lot of the high schools have swim teams and no place to swim. Well, one thing that we found out when we were doing our research on this is not only had the citizens told us that they wanted that, but they had also told us, um, but what we also found out was that a lot of our neighborhoods had the the smaller swimming teams with the younger children under age, under fifth grade. And about 400 of 430 of the children that were in a recent competition were from Edmond. Really? And so we didn't have, and we didn't have a place for them to practice or um, we didn't have lane time for them is what they call it. And this facility will do that. You'll build it and they will come, yeah, I guess, is the, yeah. is the answer. Yeah. Field of dreams or, or pool of dreams. The pool of dreams, that's exactly what it is. That's well, where, exactly what it is. When will it open? Um, they're breaking ground, I think, in about a month and a half. And then it takes it about 13 months to get built. So we're hopeful um, spring in a year. It'll well, be open. That's wonderful. I know. That it's a be wonderful exciting. thing for Edmond and for the state. You've had a... Uh, a very balanced but yet diverse career uh, getting to where you are now with your uh, your legal work, uh, your banking work, mm -hmm. and your civic work or, or public mm -hmm. work. How, what, what have you learned from each of those sectors that you think will serve you well where you are? Well, if, I, if we start with the legal career, I tell my sons, I tell students all over Oklahoma when I speak to kids, you can never go wrong with a background in law. Uh, even if you don't want to practice law, it gives you such a great springboard into uh, the business world, into public service. It, it just gives you a great, a great background. And so I practiced law. I was at the Supreme Court for the last 10 years of my career and got to handle a diverse amount, uh, diverse kind of cases, and got to deal with judges all over the state. And um, that was fun and interesting. That's how I learned my way around the Capitol building, mm -hmm. is that job. Um, working with the legislature on budgets and things like that. So it was a great learning experience. And then um, worked with my dad. The story there is that my dad called me and said, he calls me sis. <laughs> hey sis, <laughs> if you'll come work for me, I'll let you work fewer hours so you can be with your babies and uh, that lasted about three weeks 
<laughs> I worked with him, worked with him five years, but the smaller amount of time lasted about three weeks. Yeah. You don't run a company part time. And so I worked with my dad and um, then springboarded into banking because when Spirit Bank talked to me, they needed someone who had a legal background and who understood um, their way around the capital, who also knew how to um, run a small business and knew what our small businesses were facing. So well, that's I, kind of Spirit Bank's it, niche, is it, it not? It is. The lending it is. to small business. It is. It is. And that was First Kel, Fidelity. Kelly. It is. Yeah. Kel. And it was also First Fidelity's niche. So it was a great fit. It was a great opportunity. And I love banking. And I think having lived with um, the highly regulated industry that mm -hmm. I've lived with for the last seven years, it really gives me a different perspective as I come into this new job. And um, having been a public servant for three years as mayor mm -hmm. also gives me a perspective of what people are really facing. Well, you've, you've gone from being the regulated to the regulator. That's right. Well, we're going to come back to that. We've got the break uh, for right now for a commercial break. We'll be right back. Uh, you're watching uh, Patrice uh, Douglas, our new uh, Oklahoma Corporation Commissioner here on The Verdict. Uh, stick with us. We'll be right back. The thing that has made the most sense for me is realizing that I am still an educator, and that is what I do at the Chickasaw Nation. I'm Dr. Amanda Cobb Greetham. I'm a historian, and I'm Chickasaw. The Chickasaw Cultural Center is amazing. It is a very, very special place devoted to the sharing and to the celebration of Chickasaw history and culture. State-of-the-art technology exhibits that are not like anything I've ever seen. The Spirit Forest is incredible, and you feel as if you have actually just walked into a forest with huge trees all around you. It's timeless, and yet it's sort of also representative of our time depth to really just sort of reach through time and touch the past. By the end of the exhibits, you really have a sense of Chickasaw cultural and political resurgence and the extent to which we are a healthy, dynamic, and vital tribe today. Chickasaws have always been an inclusive people. This is something for the whole community and for the state of Oklahoma. In 25 years, world energy demand will grow by 44% with oil and natural gas largely meeting the need. The question is, will America's demand be met by American resources? Oklahoma says yes. We're developing the largest oil and natural gas discoveries America has seen in 40 years. It's creating jobs and millions in tax revenue for schools, roads, and hospitals. Oklahoma's oil and natural gas industry, advancing our state, empowering our nation. When you have something important to communicate, it becomes clear that there's a lot of competition for your audience's attention. So how can your message stand out and actually resonate with your audience? Legal Graphics has the answers. The team at Legal Graphics will work with you to plan, design, and even test your presentation to ensure your message will be heard and remembered. Call Legal Graphics today to schedule an appointment. The readiness is all. Welcome back to The Verdict. Kent Myers with Patrice Douglas, our new Oklahoma Corporation Commissioner, recently appointed by Governor Fallon. She's in the office, uh, running hard, just came off an oil rig today, she said, uh, watching a frack job go on in Oklahoma. Uh, Patrice, uh, you've been appointed to take uh, Jeff Cloud's uh, position when he resigned. I have. Tell our viewers the rather uh, startling uh, information about you're having to run, if you choose to, to run for re-election and how right. often you have to do it. Because this is a six-year term, supposedly. It is. And it's a statewide election. It's a statewide election. So take that. There are three corporation commissioners. We're elected in staggered terms. So every two years, you're looking at an election for a corporation commissioner. However, when you're appointed to fill a position, like I have been appointed to fill Jeff Cloud's position, I will stand for election if I choose to do that in 13 months. So I will have a statewide election. In 2012? In 2012. Not this November, but next November. 
and then I will also stand for election again in 2014 if I choose to do that, which is the time that Jeff's term would have ended. So when you're appointed into a spot, you have to hit the ground running because you're going to have an election pretty quickly on the Corporation Commission. Well, now, if I think back to uh, my government uh, training or government lessons, I don't know of any other statewide office that has, would have to run uh, two statewide campaigns in uh, three years. I'm, I'm not sure if there is one, but I know that if I choose to do it, I'm going to have two statewide elections in three years. So the Douglas family um, had to think about that when we got the phone call, but we decided we were excited about the possibility of that. At some point, you'll make a decision about whether we you will. want to do that or not. We will. Uh, but I guess uh, without regard to what the decision is, if you, do, if you do decide to do it, there'll have to be some pre-planning to get it done. There will be. And how soon will you have to start doing that? You know, I think pretty quickly. I think pretty quickly. Um, when, we've made, when we made the decision, myself, my husband, and my kids, when we made the decision to run for mayor, it was a family decision. It'll be that again. We will decide as a family. And um, my, my sons have loved, have loved this opportunity. They've loved the opportunity to get to serve as um, a family that was an example in Edmond. And so um, we'll talk about it and see if they're ready to do it on a statewide level. What have you been doing um, since you started uh, uh, actually showing up for work every day at the Corporation Commission? I've been what? running really fast. <laughs> <laughs> I've been running really fast. Today I got to go to an oil rig. Yeah. I was out on an oil rig today. I got to watch them um, do fracturing and watch the screens as they do it and learned a whole lot about it from the engineers that were sitting out there explaining it to me as, as this was happening um, when they were doing this horizontal well. I have, I don't know if you know this, Kent, but the Corporation Commission meets almost every single day. We're one of the very few uh, commissions in the nation that meets almost every single day. We have public votes almost every single day. So in the last two weeks, I have voted more times on more orders than I did three years as mayor. How in the world do you get prepared on, we'll say, in a morning to vote on five orders? Do you work all night the night before you do. getting ready? You do. Or do you have a staff recommendations? I have a staff. I have staff recommendations, but um, bottom line is it's my name on it. Yeah. So you look at it and you take it pretty seriously. Well, this is not a nine-five job. Then. No, it's absolutely not. It's absolutely not, and you get the orders for the next day, and I think on, to, on tomorrow's we have 74. Um, we have 74. Most of them are oil and gas matters uh, because the Corporation Commission um, looks at pooling orders, spacing orders, looks at well location orders, um, so we deal with all that. And then we also deal with all the public utilities in Oklahoma, so whenever there's a rate hearing coming up, um, we have to set schedules for that and we look at at all the preliminary information that is going to come before the Commission in these open meetings. What what size staff just approximately uh, does the Corporation Commission have um, totally? A little <coughs> uh, fewer than uh, it's fewer than 400. We have about 200 in the office building across the street from the Capitol mm -hmm. and then we have field inspectors who are out looking at rigs, out looking at the different things that that the Commission has to regulate and is in charge of. And I, I knew, but I think the oath of office for a commissioner exemplifies how many things that we're in charge of. The oath of office is different than any other uh, elected official takes no. in Oklahoma, and it's about this long. <laughs> and uh, we have to, we, it talks about steamboat lines, canals, telegraph lines, telecom. So we uh, regulate a lot of different industries from trucking to oil and gas. So we, yeah, have, the, a, we have a big job. The uh, motor carriers driving over our uh, state highways are regulated mm -hmm. by the Corporation Commission. They absolutely are. Uh, back when there were pay phones, the pay phones used to be regulated by the Corporation Commission. Yes, they were. And uh, intrastate uh, telecommunications absolutely. regulated by the Corporation Commission. Absolutely. When OG&E or ONG want to raise a rate, 
uh, regulated by the Corporation Commission. I don't see Absolutely. how you keep it all straight. Well, it's interesting because that, that's the reason this job is so fun. It's just fun. Well, it's very challenging. I'm it is sure. challenging, but you know, you're touching every Oklahoman's life. Mm -hmm. You're touching the lives, um, whether you live in Guymon or Woodward or, or Enid or wherever you live, the Corporation Commission plays a part in your life. And I think that's so important to recognize because it's also so important as a regulator to realize that regulation can be overbearing. It can be too much. It mm -hmm. can stall out business. We have a job at the Corporation Commission of not only balancing, we have to balance. We have to balance our economic resources here in Oklahoma with our natural resources. And we have to make sure that we are um, minimizing waste in both categories. So that requires us to be the voice for Oklahoma when it comes to the fights that are going on in Washington, D.C. about oil and gas. It requires us to be the voice, of, uh, the educating voice so that we can explain about these new technologies that oil and gas companies are using and, that, and, and the way that we can move this nation forward. So the Corporation Commission is really the front line when it comes to um, not only protecting our natural resources, which are so critical, our water, our air, but also our oil and our gas, um, we, we have to protect that. But we also have to make sure that we remember that every day is costing a small businessman money. Um, so we need to be timely, we need to be efficient, we need to have regulations that make sense, that are um, related to what we're trying to accomplish in the end. And, you know, I have two sons, and I want them to grow up with clean air and clean water, but I also want them to have jobs in Oklahoma. Yeah, it's, a, it's really a unique regulatory position to be not only in charge of making sure that an industry that deserves to thrive has an atmosphere in which it Absolutely. can thrive, but at the same time, thrive safely Absolutely. to the citizens. And you've got both sides of that regulatory coin. We're in charge of that. We're supposed to be looking at that. And I think as we um, listen to the national dialogue in the next year or so, you're going to hear a lot more about the new technologies that have, that have um, come to na national attention. What, what we get to tell people like um, national organizations that are regulating or are attempting to regulate here in Oklahoma, we do this pretty well. Mm -hmm. At the commission, we do a pretty good job of this. We understand that we are, um, we, our practices have to be business friendly as well as protecting our environment. And we, we monitor that. We take that job seriously. But um, what we've been doing in Oklahoma for 60 years is what the nation is now learning about. And I challenge folks to come here and drink our water and breathe our air because we've done a good job. We have just about 30 seconds left. What do you want our viewers to know about uh, your job as a corporation commissioner and what you're going to try to accomplish? Well, I'm going to bring a lot of energy to the job, and I'm learning already. Um, like I said, I was on a rig today. But I want consumers and citizens to understand that the commission is not um, there to be scary. We want, we want their comments. We want to hear from them because their interests weigh very heavily in our balancing act. That's going to have to be the last word. We are out of time. But Perfect. thank you so much for thank coming you. in. Good luck to you in Thanks. your new job. Thanks. We have been fortunate today to have as our guest Patrice Douglas, the new Oklahoma Corporation Commissioner, who is off to a running start doing an awful lot of things. You're watching The Verdict. We'll be right back. comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. 
Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. In Oklahoma, we enjoy a high quality of life due to good, well-paying jobs. Commercial real estate professionals play a significant role in bringing new businesses and investments to Oklahoma. The commercial real estate community has come together to market Oklahoma's commercial properties nationwide through a free public website, okcommercialproperty.com. We are invested in keeping Oklahoma strong and growing because economic development ensures quality of life. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Welcome back to The Verdict, uh, Kent Myers. We're just finishing up a show with our new Oklahoma Corporation Commissioner, uh, the Honorable Patrice Douglas. Uh, she's off and running, doing a good job. She's got a lot of energy, a lot of background, a lot of experience, and I'm sure we're going to see great things from her in these next uh, few years. Uh, you want to know more about Patrice or be in touch with her, we've got a website that we can refer you to. It's www.occ.state.ok.us. That will uh, reach Patrice, and uh, feel free to do that. Or look at ours, verdict.tv for Mick Cornett. See you next week. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.